So today we are going to do uh, 4.5 part 2. We are going to graph secants and cosecants. And we're going to start off with our secant function. Now you may recall that the secant is the reciprocal of our cosine. So you might notice down here at the bottom, I have our cosine curve. Because I want to focus on our cosine function, so our cosine function is going to lead us to the graph of a secant. So first off, you'll notice on my chart, I've got not only the secant showing, but I have the cosine showing. And so I'm going to put my five good values that I use pretty much graphing everything. 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So those are my x's. And then we're going to think about the pattern on the unit circle of our cosine. The cosine is the x values on the unit circle. The cosine starts at 1 and then goes up. So our cosine value goes 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. Now that's a pattern that is very useful for you to have in your memory banks because that pattern is going to be useful for uh, tangents, secants, uh, and then of course just graphing the cosine in general. Now remember, the secant is the reciprocal of that. It's the flip of it. So the secant at 0 is 1 over 1, which is 1. And then the secant, secant at uh, pi over 2 is 1 over 0, or undefined. The secant at pi is 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. And the secant at 3 pi over 2 is 1 over 0. It's undefined. And the secant at 2 pi is 1 over 1, which is just 1. Now, let's look for a moment at our cosine graph. And let's pinpoint all the places where the cosine is 0. So we're looking at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Where the cosine is 0, the um, secant is going to have an asymptote. So let's put our asymptotes on. Just like um, the cosine causes asymptotes um, in our tangent graph, the cosine will cause asymptotes where it's equal to 0 in our secant graph. So let's put those on. Now halfway in between these asymptotes, you will notice that we have ones and negative ones. That is where our cosine has an extrema, uh, um, a maximum or a minimum. Let's put those values on. So at zero, we are at one. And let's make this one right here. Let's make that 1 and that negative 1. At um, pi, we are at negative 1. At 2 pi, we're up at positive 1. So you'll notice that this is, it goes positive 1, then negative 1, then positive 1, then negative 1, then positive 1, then negative 1. Now, the cosine graph let me draw it for you, is living right here. There's our cosine graph. And what's really interesting about a uh, secant function is right here, you're, we're going to get, we're going to get a parabola looking portion that's going to bounce downward. Here we're going to get a parabola looking function that uh, points upward and then this one's going to go downward and this one's going to go upward. 
So every place that the cosine has a maximum, the secant will bounce off of that maximum and then create like a parabola pointing up. And every place the, the cosine has a minimum at negative 1, the secant's going to bounce off of it and create this parabola pointing downward. So the secant graph itself, I don't know if I can get it all the way off of there, but the secant graph itself are the green uh, parabolas that are stuck between the asymptotes and they're bouncing off the cosine function. So many times I will graph the cosine function, kind of make it dashed to realize we're not really using that function, that's why it's dashed. But that function is going to guide us so that we can uh, graph any secant that comes along. So that is a secant function. So the secant function bounces off of the cosine. Now let's take a look at the parent cosecant function. We know that the cosecant is the flip of the sine. So let's change these right here to sine and cosecant. The five good values that we need, again, are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. You need to remember where the sign starts. Remember that the sign starts at 0 and goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Every place that the sign has a zero, the cosecant will have an asymptote. Every place that the sign is a one or a negative one, the cosecant will match. So here's a one and a negative one. And that's telling us where the cosecant is going to bounce off of the, um, of the sine function. <clears throat> So first, let's graph the asymptotes. I like to do that uh, first for our tangent, for our uh, cotangent, secant, or cosecant. Put on your asymptotes. We have asymptotes at 0, pi, and 2 pi. So let's put those on. So at 0, pi, 2 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi, we have asymptotes. Every place that the uh, sign has a max or a min at 1 or negative 1, the cosecant will match it. So here at pi over 2, we are up at 1. Let's make that 1. And he, at 3 pi over 2 is a negative 1. At negative pi over 2 will be a negative 1. And it always alternates. Positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. Every place that there's a negative 1 will have a parabola type section bouncing downward. Every place that there's a positive 1 will have a parabola type piece bouncing upward. So that is what a cosecant graph looks like. We don't have to put it in there, but technically we put could put our sine curve and lay it right in there. And every place that it has a zero should be an asymptote. Every place that it has a one or a negative one should be the spot where your um, cosecant is bouncing off of the function. So that is what the parent cosecant function looks like. So here is a list of all the properties for these functions. So let's start with our cosecant function. The domain for a cosecant function is um, going to be every real number except for the full pi's. So no 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi. The ranges are weird for these because think about it. There's a graph above one 
there's a graph below one. There's a graph above one. There's a graph below one. So if you look, this section is the graph above one, from one to infinity with a bracket on the one. This is the, for the pieces that are below one. That's all the pieces go from negative infinity to negative one. So um, that's the range, how you would write the range. There's no x-intercepts. It never touch the x-axis for the parent function. There are no y-intercepts for the cosecant function. It never touches the y-axis either. Think about the domain and the continuity should match. Domain and continuity always go together, and it does in this case. They go together. As well as our asymptotes, all three of those things go together. Domain, continuity, and asymptotes should all kind of be the same thing. So they all have, show that there's a problem at the full pi's. So n pi, remember that refers to 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, full pi's. This happens to be an odd function. And the reason it's an odd function is because our sine is an odd function. So that means that if we take a cosecant, and we put a negative inside of a cosecant that will pop a negative on the outside of a cosecant. So cosecants are odd because sines are odd. Here is the graph of our cosecant function. If we were to graph our sine function There's your sine function. And that's what it says there. Use the graph of the sine to help you graph a cosecant. Use the graph of a sine to help you graph a cosecant. You don't have to graph this, the sine, but it will help you. So that is your cosecant information. Now let's go down the list of properties for a parent secant function. The domain here is everything but the odd pi over 2's, the odd pi over 2's. So 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, there'll be an asymptote. Negative 1 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, negative 7 pi over 2. So the odd um, pi over 2s, they'll be an asymptote. The range will be exactly like our cosecant function. Just like our cosecant function, we have no x-intercepts, but this does hit the y-axis at a height of 1. Remember, the continuity and the asymptotes go together. So domain, continuity, and asymptotes are pretty much asking the same kind of question in a slightly different way. The symmetry, this is an even function, just like our um, cosine function is. So that means that inside of a secant function, if we put a negative x, we don't have to keep it, you can uh, delete it, okay? We would use the graph of a cosine would help us to graph a cosecant. The graph of a cosine will help you to graph a cosecant. There is the graph below. I'm going to throw a uh, cosine in there for you. I'm sorry, yeah, a cosine in there for you. And that last part shouldn't say that. Wait one second. To graph A, that should be a secant. Okay. So let's put on the cosine function so you can see it. So the cosine function goes like this. 
every place that the cosine equals zero. The secant will have a, uh, an asymptote. Every place that the cosine is one, the secant is one. Every place that the cosine is negative one, the secant is negative one. And that's where you can determine where it bounces off of the function. <laughs> so those are the properties of our secant and cosecant functions. So the parents. So let's look at example 4a. So it says the secant of x plus pi over 2 plus 1. Now let's recall some things that we know. The thing on the inside should change and shift our x values. The thing on the outside will change and shift our y values. Okay. So let's think about what our secant does. So what are our five good um, values? Normally they are normally our five good values are zero. So set it equal to zero. Then pi over two. Set it equal to pi over two. I will usually do the first three, hoping that I'll pick up a pattern. So our first three are 0, pi over 2, and pi. So let's see if we can find the pattern. So for the first one, we have to solve it for x by subtracting a pi over 2. So we get negative pi over 2. And then we get 0. And then we get positive pi over 2. So you might notice that we are counting by pi over 2s starting at negative pi over 2 and going up. So we've got negative pi over 2, 0, positive pi over 2, pi, and then finally 3 pi over 2. Okay. Now remember how a secant work. It is the reciprocal of our cosine. Now let me just remind you, I'm going to put them to the side here. The cosine values start at 1, then go 0, then negative 1, then 0, and 1. Every place that the cosine was 0, the secant will have an asymptote. Every place that the cosine is 1, the secant will be 1. Every place that the cosine is negative 1, the secant will be negative 1. So if we didn't have that plus 1 hanging off the end, it would go 1 asymptote, negative 1 asymptote. One. But this graph has been lifted up one. So we need to add one. They can't add one to an asymptote, but you need to add one to the actual values. So now we're at two, zero, and two. Now, I think of that as a change in the midline, that vertical shift. So let's definitely put a midline shift up here, and let's just make this one. And I'm going to put that midline shift of one up there, okay? So if there is a plus one, minus one, something like that hanging off the end, you should always put the midline on. The time I don't, I don't seem to put it on very often for tangents and cotangents, but you could put it there too if you want. Now I'm going to put on my asymptotes. There's an asymptote at zero. There is an asymptote at pi. So every four units there's an asymptote. So I'm going to count four more units and get an asymptote, four more units and get an asymptote. I'm going to put on some more asymptotes on my graph. Now, let's put on the points. At negative pi over 2, I'm an upward piece. I am at 2. So I am at 2. At pi over 2, I am at 0. 
and I, that's not two, that, that's three. Wait a second. One, two. Two's right there. And then I'm at zero. And then at three pi over two, I'm back at two again. All of the higher pieces are parabola like things that are going upward. So these are going upward. These are going downward. These are going upward. We could even put one over here to the left that's going to go downward. Now, one thing I didn't mention for these is what is a period of the function? A period of, a fun of this function includes one upward and one downward. So like if you look, that right there is one period of the function because it includes an upward and a downward section. So that is a period. In this particular case, the period of a parent function and this one is 2 pi, just like our sine and cosine, because it has to bounce off of a full sine and cosine. So a period of these functions are, are going to match the sine and the cosine that it's dealing with. Remember how we did bx equals something? Well, here it's bx equals 2 pi for the sine, the cosine, the secant, and the cosecant. The only ones that are different from that are our tangent and our cotangent because of the way that they flip around the unit circle, it only takes them a pi to repeat themselves. But a sine, a cosine, a secant, and a cosecant always repeat themselves in a 2 pi. So they're very much like the sine and the cosine themselves. Okay. Let's look at our last example, example 4b, which is a cosecant. Now you might see that our cosecant has something inside the parentheses. So that tells us our good sample of x's are going to change. So let's make a little chart here. Normally our first one is 0, so we're going to set x plus pi over 3 equal to 0. We're going to get negative pi over 3. This graph has a, a phase shift of a negative pi over 3 or a pi over 3 to the left. So what's pi over 3? Well, pi over 3, if you recall, is 60 degrees. So we've shifted it to the left 60 degrees. So we're going to get some really pretty funky fractions, but we'll, we'll deal with that, and I'll show you how to deal with that. So our next one, we normally would set it equal to. is pi over 2. The common denominator of 3 and 2 is 6. So let's make them sixths, unfortunately. So that's 2 sixths equal to 3 sixths. When we subtract a 2 sixths from both sides, we get 1 sixth. So we get pi over 6. Now, unless you're really good at fractions, you might not see the pattern yet. So let's do another one. So let's do uh, x plus pi over 3 equals our next one, pi. Now, 1's a whole number and 1 is not. 1's a whole pi, 1 is not. So put it over 1, multiply by 3 on top and bottom. Our common denominator is 3. We get x plus pi over 3 equals 3 pi over 3. So the next one is 2 pi over 3. Still, unless you're good at fractions, the pattern might not be clear yet as to what's happening. So let's do the next one. x plus pi over 3 equals 3 pi over 2. We need to have a common denominator of 6. So that's 2 pi over 6 equals 9 pi over 6. 2 minus 9 is 7, so the next one is 7 pi over 6. Now here's the pattern. It's kind of a weird pattern, but it's still a pattern. If you look at the ones that came out to be pi over 3s, they're actually a pi apart. If you look at the ones that are pi over 6s, they're actually a pi apart. The next one's going to be 5 pi over 3. 
okay? I know, gross. How are we going to put pi over 6's and pi over 3's on our chart? Well, you can guesstimate if you want. You can guesstimate where those things would be at. But what I am going to do is I am going to uh, take the graph paper I've been provided and I am going to break it into sixths because that's my common denominator. But every fraction that's there, our common denominator is six. So I'm going to break it down to be sixes. So pretend like the values that are there were never there to begin with. So I'm going to erase them. I'm going to pretend like they weren't there. And then I'm going to um, count one, two, three, four, five, six, and on the sixth one, I'm going to put my pi. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six to the left, and on the sixth one, I'm going to put a negative pi. So one, two, three, four, five, six, that puts my pi right there. Now I'm going to probably have to extend this line a little bit, and I'm going to extend this line a little bit. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's my negative pi. And there's negative 2 pi. So sometimes, unfortunately, we just have to adjust our graph paper. Unfortunately, that's just how we have to do it. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. That, that just should get us far enough. Okay. So all the pi over threes, if you want to make them or count by pi over sixes, just double them. So negative pi over three is two pi. So that's right here. Here's pi over six. Two pi over three is four pi over 6's, so 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 2 pi over 3 right there. 7 pi over 6 is right here, just count 7 units. And then 5 pi over 3 is 10 units out, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, here is 5 pi over 3. So all our units are on there, okay? Now remember how cosecant goes. It is the flip of the sign. Let's write our sign values down. Our sign values normally go 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Every place that the sign has a 0, we're going to have an asymptote. So it's going to be asymptote, asymptote, asymptote. I like putting the asymptotes on first, so let's do that. So I have an asymptote at negative pi over 3. I have an asymptote at 2 pi over 3. I have an asymptote at 5 pi over 3. They should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units apart. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units apart. We could then go backwards to the left, 6 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units apart. To graph two periods of this function, you want to have at least four asymptotes showing. So try to always have four asymptotes showing at a minimum. Now, every place that the sign was a 1, our cosecant will be a 1. So there's a 1. Every place that our sign was a negative 1, we are also at a negative 1. So at pi over 6, halfway between the asymptotes, we're at a 1. And we can make that 1 and that negative and at 7 pi over 6, we're at a negative 1. So then to the left, we're at a negative 1. And we technically should actually do this positive one up here to get a full period of the graph. Because we want to show two periods of the graph, we would show four, four uh, total ups and downs. So the positive ones go up. <coughs> The negative ones go down. Positive ones go up. Negative ones go down. So that is our graph.
So I think the worst ones to graph are the ones where you end up with funky fractions. And, and it's just a matter of what's your knowledge of, of fractions. <laughs> and just adjust, make your graph paper fit. So like if I see the common denominator is 6, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 before I make a pi. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to get the 2 pi. So just make your graph paper fit your situation. So that's how you graph a secant and a cosecant. So there you go. What's the line of graph paper? 